You are listening to Mining Stock Education, where you'll learn from the top leaders in the natural resource sector and uncover quality mining investment opportunities. In today's show, I'm going to talk about six ways to profit from a junior mining stock bear market. I'm Bill Powers, and this is Mining Stock Education. And if you've been invested in junior resource stocks over the last two years, it's been brutal for many of them. Some of my gold and silver stocks are down 40 to 50% just since the last year when I did some private placements and financed them. There's stocks that you could look at, even stocks that I've owned in the past and been featured on this show that are down 80% in the last two and a half years. So it's been absolutely brutal in this bear market. And when that occurs, sentiment gets really bad. People leave the sector. The few of us that are still left, we just trade shares amongst ourselves, as my friend David Erfley from Junior Miner Junkie always says. There are some bright spots, and sometimes a bright spot is just being flat to where you get the Osino resources or the ore zones and those developers just becoming producers are about flat or maybe down 20% over the past two years. And those are the outperformers. But when it comes to the junior miners, it is brutal and it is difficult to make money when things are trending the wrong way. But I'm going to lift up six ways in which you can profit during a junior mining or junior resource stock bear market. And the sixth one that I'm going to talk about today, the sixth one, that's the most important one. But the first one is via a discovery hole to where a company puts out a good hole, it gets the market attention, and it indicates that there could be a bigger deposit or resource there. And you analyze that initial hole and you can invest even after the share price goes up after that initial discovery hole because it could indicate there's something bigger. And years ago, I think about six years ago, I interviewed Steve Tataruk from Sprott. He's a broker. He's also a formerly trained geologist and ran exploration companies in the past. And he explains his approach to discovery hole investing. And even after the stock runs up after the discovery hole, as Rick Rule says, it can actually be cheaper after that discovery hole because now you have more information. So if you want to learn about how to do that, click on the link in the show notes below or the tab above if you're watching on YouTube to listen to my interview from six years ago with Steve Tatarak. The second way that you can profit in a junior mining stock bear market is through taking advantage of the arbitrage opportunity when there is a junior mining merger or acquisition. And seven years ago, six, seven years ago, I interviewed Giant Bandari of Anarcho Capital regarding how he seeks out 20 to 30 percent consistent profits annually just focusing a portion of his portfolio on mergers and acquisitions. So as the merger and acquisition is announced, sometimes the market doesn't fully price in the successful acquisition. And for whatever reason, especially when it's a cash offer, which is even better, there could be a 20 percent arbitrage between where the 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 share price of the company that's being acquired is relative to what the acquiring company is willing to pay. So if you believe that deal is going through, especially if it's going to be bought out for cash, you can make 20 to 30% on an arbitrage opportunity. Or if you find some good ones that the market doesn't understand, there have been even greater arbitrages than 20 to 30%. And you get that over, let's say, three, four months, whatever it takes to close the acquisition. The third way you can profit in a junior mining stock bear market is by finding a hot commodity or a soon-to-be hot commodity amidst an overall bear market. Right now, lithium is hot. Anything with the name lithium is going up. There's a lot of companies that are changing their names from this or that metal or mineral to lithium because lithium is hot. You can ride the tide, whether that explorer has success or not. It doesn't even matter. If you get in early enough, you can make money just on riding the hype around a given commodity. I remember Largo Resources back in 2017. I had that on my watch list as I was beginning to learn more about vanadium and its use for large battery storage and so forth. And so then all of a sudden, boom, vanadium popped. Largo Resources popped in late 2017. Over the next year, it went up like 10 to 12 times on decent volume. And I'll never forget that. The thing about commodity investing is there's always a commodity, even amidst an overall bear market, that is about to boom. You just have to seek it out. You have to find it. And so this is where just your own research, your own effort, you can be ahead of the crowd, get positioned in a vanadium company like Largo that's about to take off, get positioned in a lithium company before lithium gets hot again and and takes off. And you can make money in these specific commodities and the juniors that are mining or looking for these commodities amidst an overall bear market. The fourth way you can make money in a junior mining stock bear market 
is by shorting the miners. I've never done this myself. There's ETFs you could use. You could short specific miners if you think they're overdone on a promotion or so forth. I may short a miner in the, in the future if I have a large position and I want to lock in my profits. Perhaps I'll do that in the future. I've never done it thus far. Because my bias and my overall perspective is very bullish, I just don't even think about shorting miners. The fifth way you can make money in a junior mining stock bear market is by buying the pick, axe, and shovel companies that supply the industry. Some of these that I have on my watch list uh, that I've been just watching are up over 70% in the last two years while the miners are down. And so whereas you may get greater torque and upside in an individual name if you, if you pick it right, individual miner that is, if you buy a company that supplies services to the overall industry, you don't have that individual hit or miss that you get in an exploration stock, but you can benefit from a growth-oriented service company. And this is how Levi Strauss made his money. Back in the, the mining boom out west in America in the 1800s, everybody went out there to get rich. Very few actually did get rich, but Levi Strauss says, I'm going to come up with something that everybody needs, and I'm going to sell it to all these miners. And of course, denim jeans, the Levi Strauss denim jeans were sold to all those miners and he made an absolute killing, <laughs> a lot of profit off of doing that. So you can buy the pickaxe and shovel companies. I've been actually looking into this a little more, both for the mining and the oil and gas industry. And then the sixth way, which I want to focus on today of how to profit in a junior mining stock bear market is to invest in yourself in light of what junior mining stocks could do for you. Junior mining stocks and junior resource stocks for me are simply a vehicle to wealth creation and financial freedom so that I can achieve what's most important to me, which is my time freedom, so that I can have money to provide for my family what I need, but most importantly, so I can own my day, so I can own my time, so I can create my own schedule, so that I'm not stuck in the rat race having to work for a wage just to make the ends meet. Mining stocks are a leveraged way. If you want to be wealthy, if you want to own your time, you have to seek out a leveraged way to do that. If you're a business owner, you use other people's time, talent, and money. You leverage that so you can get outsized returns, more than you could ever make just exchanging, exchanging your time for a wage. So that's how business owners leverage to create wealth. Well, you can leverage and, and get that knowledge that you need to perceive the arbitrage opportunities, to perceive value before the market perceives the same value. And you get positioned in a stock that you seek out so that you're going to profit in a leveraged way, which potentially could lead to financial freedom and therefore time freedom. And in order to do that, you have to keep the vis this vision before you because this big vision of financial freedom, time freedom is what's going to cause you to be faithful in the day-to-day, -to, -day, to do the things in a disciplined manner that you can grow as a resource investor so that you can perceive and seek out these opportunities before they begin to really run. You got to look at a bear market as the off-season. And you win the games in-season because of the preparation and the training that you do in the off-season. So what I'm going to share now is more for newer resource investors. If you've been at this a while, there's probably nothing new that I'm going to share from henceforth. But if you're that person that's in an hourly job and you're wanting to learn about mining stocks, and my goal with sharing some of these simple things is to help you make your first million over the next five to seven years. Or if you're a professional and you're, you do well in whatever your profession is, you have a nice salary, you have your retirement, but maybe you got a quarter million dollars that you want to put into riskier assets in order to multiply that, what I'm going to share with you is also very applicable. And so the first thing you want to do is to develop more income or cash that you can then deploy in a future bull market. So if you're working an hourly job, seek out ways in which you can have more cash that you can stockpile for those opportunities in the future. The second thing you want to do is to consume information in this sector as a hobby. When I started this in late 2016, this show Mining Stock Education, it was because I couldn't find what I needed on the internet. There was like nothing. Compared to today, there is a, a proliferation, an exponential increase since 2020 over the last three to four years of podcasts, YouTube channels, information that you can get regarding how to be successful at resource investing. So you want to consume that as a hobby if you're going for a run, if you're going for a bike, if you're in the car or you're, you're out in the barn working on a project. 
You need to be consuming this information. Even if you don't fully understand it, just, just let it flow through <laughs> your head. And over time, via just a natural assimilation, you're going to be able to grasp more and understand more. And all the successful resource investors that I know, learning about mining stocks, learning about small cap resource stocks is their passion and their hobby. So you're going to have to make this your hobby. The next thing you need to begin to do is to get an actual trading account. Now in a bear market, as I've already indicated at my introduction, very few people actually make money, but you need not just a paper trading account to practice, but you need an actual trading account. So just put in whatever to you is a small amount of money. You have to be able to feel some of the joys of winning and the pain of losing. And so a, a paper account that's, you never actually sacrificed to put anything into it, in my opinion, that, that's not good. You want to have the actual wins and losses, at least with some of your capital, capital that you're able to lose, because during a bear market, one of the things you can then do is critique yourself and your emotions associated with your actual wins or losses, because you should be studying yourself just as you're studying the market in a bear market so that you can keep your mind stable and your emotions under control and so you can learn more about yourself <laughs> and your strengths and weaknesses and how you make investing decisions. The next thing you wanna do is read at least one press release a day. Now, when I got into this, I would read a press release and I didn't understand 90% of what I was reading. Now when I read a press release, I probably understand about 85% of what I'm reading, maybe a little more, maybe a little less, depending on the company and what it's talking about. And so it's a very technical industry. You gotta read press releases at least once a day. You can go to sites like ceo.ca, click on the big movers, the big movers up or down, see what news is associated with those up or down moves, and read the press release alongside the share price move. Just doing this every day is going to further help grow and strengthen your discernment. And, and not only read the ones that go up and down, just pick out a random one too. And then in, in the press releases, pick out one to three words or concepts that you don't understand, research or figure out what that word or what that concept is. And this is just that little by little. You know, in learning, we call this like the grammar stage where you're just getting the framework of understanding the terms and the concepts so that you could further interpret and understand more information about this sector. So if you don't understand anything about mining or the extractive industries, this is where you need to start. And it's little by little. And it's amazing as you do this, if you do this once, one, five times a week, right? Because there's five trading days. And just in three months, you'll look back and you will be amazed at how much you've grown and what you learn. This industry is so technical and there's so much to learn that sometimes it can be overwhelming. And even recently this year, when I was uh, studying uh, something in particular about this market and I wasn't fully grasping it and I was talking to brokers, talking to seasoned resource investors, like two decades into this that couldn't give me a solid answer, talking to just a variety of people to try to help me understand how this sector op operates, I said to myself, I said, there is so much to learn that I can't believe I've made any money doing this because there, there's just a lot to learn. But you don't need to become the expert. You don't need to become the Michael Jordan of resource investing. You just need to be better than the next guy. And you need to understand what to look for and when to buy. Right now, there, there's no retail, general retail interest in this sector, but there will be. Sentiment will turn. Everybody hates junior mining stocks now, but one day they're going to love them too much and there's going to be a, a flood of money. It's the whole Hoover Dam being forced through a garden holes, hose analogy that Doug Casey always talks about. You just need to be better than the next guy, as Rick Rule says. He says an old guy, an old bald, slow guy can win the 100 meter ass if he's the only guy running. And so if you're training when nobody else is even on the racetrack, you're going to get a head start. You're going to win you can make this happen. You wanna research also online chatter regarding the press releases. After you read these press releases, research the online chatter regarding the press releases to engage others' thoughts. Obviously, everybody's thoughts or comments shouldn't be valued the same, but even if you can't tell what is an insightful comment from what is a useless comment, you're only gonna to begin to develop that discernment as you begin to engage others and other ideas over time, and then you observe how the share price or that company actually evolves and how it plays out over time. And then you can go back and think through the critical comments or 
the bullish hypey comments in a comment section, and this begins to just form your, your discernment for how to approach this sector. You also need to read one book per month on the sector, and there's three different types of books. Start with the technical books like Rob Stevens' book, Mineral Exploration and Mining Essentials. We feature Dr. Rob on this show uh, once a quarter. That's the best book to start to help you understand this sector. Then read some inspirational books, usually written by like promoters or newsletter writers that want to get you interested in the sector. And they often will talk about up their wins. I will say they often don't even mention a lot of their huge losses. They're only going to talk about their wins. But in showing the wins and in showing some of the success stories, you can be inspired to the upside to keep you focused, to keep you disciplined on a daily basis, to remind you of why you're putting in all the effort and the work right now. And then third, read biographical books that tell a story of a mining entrepreneur or a mining family or a particular mining boom. So read four technical books a year, read four inspirational books a year, read four biographical books uh, on the mining industry or an entrepreneur or a family. You definitely need to incorporate that in addition to listening to podcasts, in addition to looking at press releases. And then begin to study promotions and promoters. You, you'll begin to just get a framework in your head of how to categorize different promotions and promoters to see what the market responds to, what the market doesn't respond to. When you're talking about illiquid, small cap stocks, promotion is humongous. And you need to understand how promotion impacts a stock. What I've done also is when I look at a, sh a stock chart and it goes up like on massive volume, then it comes back down, I can obviously see the dates of where the volume caused it to go up. And then I do research on Twitter. I do general internet research. And then I do research on YouTube. And then I see, and I go back and I listen to what the CEO was putting out who they hired to talk good about the stock and how that impacted the share price. And so you do want to study promotions and promoters, and that's going to help you to see what is successful and what is not successful at promoting a stock. It's also going to help you know of when you should sell a stock. I remember when I first met David Erfley back in 2017, and I, I brought up a specific company to him that I was interested in at the time. And he said, yeah, I, I sold that one for a fourfold gain last year. And I said, oh, really? I, I still think uh, it has a lot of prospectivity for the future years. Why would you sell it? He said, oh, because it went up four times in whatever it was, 30 days. And uh, I found out it was just a promotion. And before it dropped 50%, which it did, uh, I sold it for a fourfold gain in a very short period of time. And that's just when, you're, when you've been in this industry... You have to take that liquidity when it comes. If you get a fourfold move in, in 30 days and you recognize why it did it because of a promotion, all of these things you just take into your framework of understanding, into your discernment. And so study promotions and promoters in a bear market. And you have to start interacting with other full-time people in this sector or people that are committed to learning the way you are committed to learning. Because there's things that you will not learn without interacting with people in this sector. I've learned so much by interacting with fellow investors, uh, Brian Lenny, who's a part-time host on this show and runs juniorstockreview.com. He's taught me so much. He's been in this sector a decade longer than me. David Erfley, so many of the guests that you've heard on this show, my broker, going to conferences, uh, CEOs, whether they're CEOs that are sponsors of this show or just CEOs that I talk to, strategic resource investors that are deploying eight figures into this sector that I get to talk to periodically. Learning from all of these people, I learn about things that I should learn about that I would have never known about had I only listened to podcasts, had I only read press releases, had I only read some of these books. There's just so much to learn that sometimes I've said to myself, I can't even believe I've made money at this thing because the more I learn, the more I realize I don't know a lot of things. And there's always going to be somebody smarter than you. I had a, a business partner who's uh, two decades older than me, much wiser, a lot of experience in the Manhattan financial district in New York there. And he said to me once after a meeting, he said, that person is too smart for us. And I said, I think I know what you mean, but what do you mean? He said, that person's too smart for us in that they know this inside and out much better than us. They're crafty and you can't trust them to not take advantage of us. And there's a lot of that in this sector. There's always going to be people that are too smart for you. So you have to grow. You have to learn to be cautious and careful in protecting your capital and your positions. 
you have to realize that there's going to be people that are going to try to take advantage of you, whether it's promoters or management or newsletter writers or podcasters or other people in this sector or anonymous trolls on Twitter or CEO.ca or Stockhouse. There's going to be people that are smarter. But as you grow in your knowledge, you're going to be so far ahead of the average retail guy that has no idea what he's throwing money at that even though there's people that could take advantage of you, you're going to be positioned to make smarter decisions than the majority of investors that are going to rush into this sector during a bull market. So this bear market is your training. You need to call and interview CEOs of companies that you are seriously interested in. I did a monologue on this some years ago, maybe three years ago. I'll link to that below. You'll see a tab if you're listening on YouTube to that where I encourage you and give you tips on interviewing CEOs for yourself. Don't wait for someone like me or another podcaster to do it. If you're seriously interested in that, don't waste the CEO's time, but reach out to them with your prepared questions and that needs to be part of your growth plan. You say, I'm new to this. Understand, I was new to this too, but I was calling CEOs within a year asking a question. You just come up with sincere questions based on your level of understanding. And any respectable CEO, especially in an illiquid junior mining stock, should take your call. And the last thing you, you may not realize is that as you continue to implement many of the things that I'm talking about, you're not going to realize how fast you're growing until you compare yourself against where you used to be. I read a book by a newsletter writer, very elementary book on this sector. I knew everything in the book, a lot of stories. It was, it was a well-written book to get somebody interested in the sector and to get somebody interested in this newsletter writer's uh, service. And so, but when I read it, I thought to myself, man, if I read this in 2016, you know, this could be inspiring to me and help me. But reading it in late 2023 after the experience that I've had and all the hours I've put in, you know, it's not worth my time anymore, but there is a market for this book. But even as I've said to myself, I can't believe I've make, made any money in this sector because there's so much I don't know and I learn every day. At the same time, I've grown so much that I have enough equipment, I have enough tools, I have enough knowledge to make money at this. And so even as you got to stay humble, looking forward that you don't know everything, as you progress, Go back and reread something else or or as you listen to something, it's okay to pat yourself on the back and say, hey, I've made a lot of progress. I know a lot more than I used to. And so stay encouraged. Get the big picture. Mining stocks, small cap resource stocks, it's simply a vehicle that you can leverage for your own financial freedom, which can yield your own time freedom. That's how I look at it. It's a fun journey. I've enjoyed the people I met and I enjoy the wealth and the time freedom that I have as a result of some success in this sector. Thank you for listening to the show. And amidst the bear market, implement these six ways as you see fit, but in particular, number six, invest in yourself in light of what junior mining stocks could do for you. This is Bill Powers, and I'll catch you on the next show. Mm -hmm.